Melody, thanks for coming to the porch. You're welcome. I'm going to look at my cheat sheet here. <laughs> I was looking at this a minute ago. Mm -hmm. Kind of wishing I had my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> you want my? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if it's if it's yeah. your writing or my eyes or a combination. Actually, the the only word that I had a hard time with is the name of the town that you're in. Tallinn. 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 Okay. Tallinn, Estonia. Correct. And uh, Estonia <laughs> is not America. No. So you are a foreign missions missionary. Yes. So where exactly does Esto where is Estonia? Estonia is in northern Europe. It's West of Russia, we border Russia on the east, Latvia on the south, and we're on the Gulf of Finland and Baltic Sea on the west. So we're about a two hour ferry ride from Helsinki, Finland. Yeah, so how, how long have you been serving up there? I've been there six years. Six years. Now, we mm -hmm. were talking a little bit a minute ago, and uh, this isn't your first rodeo, but it's, it, missions was kind of new to you. Yes. So yes. You, you pastored. 25 years. 25 years. And where were you, where was that at? In Alaska, um, Northern California, Oregon, and Washington. I did go to Bible college in Canada with a couple of Estonians, so I'd at least heard of it and had a vague idea where it was. But um, I really didn't plan on going to Estonia. I think God just orchestrated it. I felt called to foreign missions since I was 10. Really? But I've never really felt called to a certain people group. I've just felt called to people. So. I just wanted, and at that point in my life, I was 62 when I got to go. Um, I just wanted to go anywhere God could use me. I didn't really care where it was. Um, I preferred that it wouldn't be the tropics because I don't like heat. I don't <laughs> like to, I don't do well <laughs> when it's really, really hot. Now you hear so many people <laughs> say, oh, we're just suffering for the Lord in Hawaii, but that wouldn't have been a dream for no, you. No, it would not have been wonderful for me. <laughs> so T Tallinn is perfect because it's the same latitude as my favorite place in Alaska. and. Alaska would have always been home before I went, okay. before my kids all were here. That would have been home. I left my heart there. At 10 years <laughs> old, you had a passion for missions, didn't, I mean, as you mm -hmm. said, didn't, didn't matter where, mm -hmm. just missions. You end up pastoring for, I think you said 25 years mm -hmm. in, in various places. Mm -hmm. How has been getting on the mission field been different than pastoring? Oh, you know, sometimes when you feel like you've had this little dream planted deep in your heart that you want to do someday um, and the older I got the harder it seemed to get there because I am older um, when I started to be a foreign missionary you had to have been a senior lead pastor for two years before you could even go become a missionary I remember those days then you had to then you could only have two kids then you could have three kids and we when we when we had finally pastored for two years and we looked into it again I found out I was pregnant with my fourth, and so we weren't qualified to go. And then a few years later, a friend called me and says, Melody, you can have four kids now. And so I called and we looked into it, and you could, yes, have four kids, but your oldest for your first term could not be a teenager, and Brent was turning 13. So it was like at every opportunity, it was like, okay, okay. It's like, maybe I was home missions and I just, because I loved Alaska and I loved our ministry there, and it was, much more remote. Wrangle a moose and ride a moose around? Had moose in my yard often and, and bears. That'd be so kind of cool. Long it as was, ready it was for very them. cool. Yeah. We had one on our back porch and our dog didn't even care. She just laid down on the other side of the door. Really? She didn't even bark. <laughs> Not a very good guard dog. <laughs> so looking at the, <laughs> the desire and the, and the burden and okay, there's mm -hmm. all these roadblocks. Do you ever have a point where you're going, Every time I think I'm going to fulfill what I think God's plan is, somebody's shooting it down, whether it's, mm -hmm. you know, the AG or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. You ever sit there and go, why, why, why? No, well, sure, I did. Um, my son reminded me after we went that, you know, he says, Mom, I'm sure this was God's plan all along. You know, we don't know what his timing is. Mm -hmm. um, my heart was always for people, and in Alaska, we... We served a lot of different people. We served a lot of home missions churches everywhere we went. So, you know, I, I don't regret and, or, you know, I'm very grateful for all the opportunities we had. I think my kids had an amazing upbringing that, that I'm, so I'm grateful for all that. It just, but I just still had that desire. I wanted to go somewhere in the world in a different culture where, you know, I just wanted to have that opportunity. And uh, so when it did come, <clears throat> it was, 
truly an answer to prayer. Don Ross is the one that I was in a difficult spot in my life. My husband had left, and so I was trying to figure out if I was even qualified to be in ministry anymore and um, trying to figure out what I was doing. And I was, he and Brenda and I were on a trip somewhere, and he asked me if I felt like what I was doing in my local church at Sound Life and my job were fulfilling God's call in my life. And I didn't hesitate, and I said, no, but I don't know what I can do. I don't know what I can do on my own. And he said, well, if there were no restrictions, anything, where would you be? And I said, somewhere on the foreign field. I just, that's where my heart is. And the very next day, he set me up with an appointment for Dave Cole. And within the year, I was in Tallinn, Estonia. So for me, it's a, yeah, I, re- I quit my job, retired from my job at the end of September. And I was in Tallinn in November. No kidding. I had amazing support. God just, I didn't even have to hardly work for it. People were just wanting to help me, help me realize this dream that God had given me and support me. It was just, and I truly feel like it's been a gift. I love what I'm doing and it's a gift to me. I'm kind of going back to the, mm-hmm. to the roadblocks and mm-hmm. the whys and the why nots. Those, those are really formative times. I mean, if, we, if we can trust God in those, mm-hmm and accept that and move forward, look what he's blessed you with now. I know, I know. I mean, living living Mm -hmm. the dream. Mm -hmm. I am, I do. I feel like I'm living my dream. Um, I feel like God redeemed and restored my heart and now he's redeemed and restored my dreams. And I went for two years and at the end of my next term, it will be 10. So it's like, um, it was even more than I thought was gonna be possible. And it's been absolutely wonderful. I felt, fully like I contribute. I don't, you know, I don't want to be a token anything. I never have. I was raised in that whole women's lib era. I don't right. want to be a token woman. I don't want to be a token missionary. I don't want to uh, be there just because I'm nice and people like me. I, mm-hmm. If I don't feel like I'm contributing, I want to go somewhere I can. And um, my team leaders and my team have constantly assured me that they want me there, that I'm a, an important part of what we're doing. And they just really make me feel like I'm I'm supposed to be there. What would you say to somebody that has had a dream in their heart, but but life and circumstances and so forth have shut it out and they're wondering, well, hey, maybe I should just be happy being being done, being retired, being, you know, being a grandmother or grandfather or whatever? Well, I would tell them, I would tell them not to give up. I would tell them if they still really feel like that's For me, it was part of my healing process from my divorce and everything else. And you know how when we're healing, even physically, you can get to a certain point where, you know, I can do this. I'm I'm okay. I don't have to be able to run a marathon. I can walk. I can, Mm -hmm. but we're not fully healed at that point. And uh, for me, it's like, I don't want people to settle for that. If that's what not what God has for you, don't settle for less. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But what I'm hearing you say is press in. Don't yep. don't, don't settle. Up. Don't settle. No. For good enough. And it's worth it. No. It really is worth it. I didn't know if, you know, going through and trying to get to that point. There were a lot of times I wanted to give up and just say I wanted to live my dreams vicariously through my children. Oh, they're true. serving God. They're doing amazing things. It's like, you know, I don't have to be out there doing it. But that's still not the dream God gave me in my heart. Right. And so all my children were very good. They really pushed me to pursue my dreams and to and to be who God wanted me to be and not just to settle. I love what I'm doing. I love working with Jesus in Tallinn. I, I can tell that. So, 